Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Today I'm going to show you four awesome piano chord progressions that you should know. By the way, if you're a fan of our work at the London Contemporary School of Piano, you should visit our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, to get your resources kit that accompany these videos, including this one with these awesome chord progressions. Yeah, it's, it's subjective, right? I think if um, I was having another day, I'd probably show you another four chord progressions, but these four have a special place in my heart. They're just really nice to play on the piano. I'm taking this from a I guess you could say a, um, a popular music, slight jazz uh, viewpoint, though you could come across some of these progressions also in classical music. So I hope this covers a wide range of genres for you, but I think they're just great chord progressions you should play. There's many reasons why you should play them, because they're quite universal. They're used in a lot of songs, a lot of pieces of music, and they'll also just help you get around the piano really effectively. I've really put that into consideration when I've chosen these progressions. Not just the feel of them and the enjoyment of playing them, but the fact that they are going to help you technically move across the keyboard with more confidence. And that's why these are really good exercises. I'm going to start with this one in a minor key, which follows the circle of fourths, or you could say circle of fifths. Um, and it's a really great progression. I think this is a progression, like all of these progressions, that you should play in a couple of different keys to get a feeling of the progression in different scales and how that changes the music. So we're going to explore that as well. And that's, that's actually a really important part of today's video. So let's start this one in the key of C minor, and I'm going to be quite moody in the way I play this one. We're going to do sort of a, a, a nice moody uh, rendition of it. And it goes like this. Let's do that again. Go up an octave. Now I'm going to add more seventh chords to this to make it sound a little jazzier. You can hear how it just changes the feel of the progression a little bit to add those sevenths, but fundamentally it's still the same progression. Let's just take it from its simple element that we just have this movement of chords. And for those of you who are less familiar with how to embellish your chords, this is just a really good starting point just to play it, chord it out in a simple way, including the sevenths. So I'm going to show you some embellishment techniques today as well but it's just good to get the basics down, to be patient, focus on the fundamentals. Just like that. Now, what I was doing to embellishing it, I was adding arpeggiations in the left hand, particularly centered around the octave and the fifth. And sometimes I might put the 10th and the ninth to create effects like that in the left hand. I'm gonna mention embellishment a bit today, but that's not the main purpose of this video, but it's good to learn some of these techniques. I think, I know some of you like to, to think about embellishments. So you can even practice doing things like this on this progression, which is quite fun.
and I'm also embellishing the right hand by playing the first five notes of what I would call a micro scale of that chord. It's quite an effective technique. I'm not overdoing it. I'm still trying to keep it quite simple, but I just have access to those extra notes that allows me to embellish. Just really remember the most important thing is to work at your own pace. So just remember that. You're not running a race against anybody. You're, you're, you're only improving yourself. That's what this is all about. Now, I think this is really important to do this, and even in the early stages, is to do this in other keys. And even if you can't calculate how to do it in other keys, you can head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, because our resources kit, our free resources kit with these exercises in, in it are in different keys as well. So you can just use that just to help you quickly get it into another key. Because what I want you to really explore is the commonality of the same progression, the very fact it's the same progression, but experiencing it from the lens of a different key. So why don't I do this in E minor now? about F minor. G minor. So this just gives you a few extra perspectives of the progression. Now before I move on to the next progression, I'd like to now just play an example of this progression. That's, it's been slightly modified, it's similar but a bit different. I'm thinking of a song like Fly Me To The Moon. It uses not entirely the same progression, but a very similar variation of this progression where the principle is pretty much the same, it's just been uh, repurposed into a great song like Fly Me To The Moon. And it goes like this in the context of Fly Me To The Moon. I'm going to play it more like a swing.
obviously I was adding a few embellishments there in the jazz sense, but you can hear how it's the same progression and how that progression really builds that song. And it's a, it's a classic chord progression. It's used in lots and lots of other songs. Um, I mean, it's not just used in jazz, it's used in classical music. You'll often hear Bach used in this progression. So yeah, it's used a lot, even in Vivaldi's Four Seasons. So this is a progression that has stood the test of time. Next one, number two, out of our awesome chord progressions. By the way, get to the website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, get the kit, because I want you to sit down and practice these things. I don't just watch you watching YouTube. Um, I want you to do it. So this next progression is one of my favourites. I could come up with too many variations on this progression. I could do a class on this progression alone and it would go for way too long. So I need to, I'm going to move quite quickly with this one. This also gets us through the circle of fifths slash circle of fourths, same thing. But we're going up in fourths, down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth, down a fifth. But we do have to displace octaves. But you end up with this, and so this gets you around every single chord, every single major chord on the piano. Um, that's what's really cool about it. So, you know, we end up with C major, F major, B flat major, E flat major, A flat major, D flat major, G flat major, B major, E major, A major, D major, G major, C major. If you could start at any point, you don't have to start on C. You could start on D, you can just go around that whole circle. Uh, you could start wherever you like. There's no start or finish point to this one. It could just go on and on and on and on. So in its most basic format, this is what it is. we played every single major chord there you had a real sense of progression to it so it's quite a cool thing to play now I'm going to expand on that with some dominant sevens to lead us to the next chord Dominant seven with the E in the bass just leads us beautifully to the F and so on. I might have been going a bit quick for some of you, so I'm going to really strip this back and slow it down, but I'm going to go really full on gospel with it. is quite a fun one to improvise on I must admit I have been doing this for a while you know I mean I, these are things I think about all the time even when I'm 
meant to be thinking of something else. My mind often wanders into this haze of, ooh, circling around the circle of fifths with cool dominant seven chords, you know. I, I don't really have a life, you know, so um, that's just the way it goes for me. So um, take your time. Uh, just, you know, move at your own pace with these things. Uh, I find these things extremely addictive. <laughs> chords are just the best, right? So I'm going to even add more to that. I just can't help myself. I'm going to now put a step up on this progression. So not just the dominant seven, I'm going to walk up with this type of step up. I'll do it really slowly to show you. So wait, C, D minor seven, C over E, F. Let's do it again. We can even make that a C7 over E to the F. And I'm going to do that on every passage to the next chord. I need to behave. What I love about this progression, you can just do it all day. It doesn't have an end, you know, it's the song that never ends. Isn't that cool? It just leads into the next chord which leads into the next chord, which leads into the next chord, and so on. You're just in this loop. Now, this is getting super hard now, but I'm just going to show you one more variation of this, where we put it into the left hand, C major, then with the B flat in the bass, the dominant seven in the bass, leading us to the F with the A in the bass, leading to the B flat with the A flat in the bass. This is my favorite variation of this progression, by the way, because what it means, it's a bit of puzzle here, is it means that it's always, the bass is always dropping down a semitone whilst traveling through the circle of fifths. That still to this day blows my mind. I've been doing this for like over 30 years and this progression blows my mind. It's like a miracle of music science or something. And it just goes on forever. And you're just going down semitones and elegantly, beautifully walking through the circle of fifths. It's like, wow, wow, who, who came up with this stuff? Like, that, that's magic. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I'm just voicing it in some different ways here, but and this is advanced. It, this might be going over some of your head. Don't worry. We, we build it up in steps. Just go back to the basics and go to the second step we did, the third step. Go to our website. Get the resources kit, inquire about our complete musician program, which trains you in all of these areas. If you want to undertake this magical training, we have access to it. We've been doing this for years. And we help our students every day with this stuff. All right, I'm going to really let rip with this now. You'll just give it all to my left hand now. To free up my right hand. And then I improvise in the right hand over the top. Just playing slices of the chord, really.
this. The end. You can't end it. You're sort of stuck in the loop. It's good for the practice then. Keeps you going and going. Okay. Wow. All right, let's simplify things a bit. Um, otherwise, my brain's going to start hurting here. So we've got... So we're just going to do a C major scale. I love this progression. This is just scales going up and down, and we make beautiful chords out of it. So this is a walk up of a C major scale. You can do this in any key. You should do it in lots of different keys. I'm just going to show you in nice, easy, trusty C. Here we go. Now, the slash chords are quite important here because we don't want the chords just to be like that. That's a little bit boring in that case. So we want both hands to do slightly different things. So the bass is dictating the chord, the bass melodic movement. And then the right hand plays around the bass a bit. So the C over the E, this slash chord thing. And what's quite nice is that the E is the middle note of the C major chord. So it's highlighting that middle chunk of the chord so it's a beautiful sound i love that sound do a d minor seven there because it makes life interesting c over e f now instead of just doing a g yeah, that's okay i'm going to do an e minor over a g so i've got that e minor and again the center of the e minor minor chord is the g there i'm going to do the same thing for the a i'm going to have an f over an a same thing for the g a b under the g so g over the b you get these lovely, delicious slash chords. But essentially all I'm doing is walking up the scale. Let's do this in another key. D flat major, ha, ah, got you. Yeah, let's do it. What about D major? You've got this. Stay with me. E flat major. About F major. G major. Now we're going to expand on that. We're going to then do the same thing on a minor scale. So we're going to make this a natural minor scale, not a traditional harmonic minor scale like this. We're going to make it a natural minor scale, which has these notes in it. You don't have a sharpened seventh, you have the seventh a tone below the octave. It's a more gentle sound. So we look at the chords that produces, you get this. This is a really exciting one. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do that in A minor. And that's quite nice, rather than again, just doing the same thing with both hands. That diminished chord's a little ugly. It doesn't really fit in so nicely in that type of progression. So instead of the right hand, we take down to a G, we bring the left hand up the tone to the B, leading us to the C, the third note of the scale. And that alone, those three chords are just gold. You could do so much just with those three chords. You almost don't need anything else. You can create a song out of that. It's a rainy day in London town. I can just talk about what I'm doing now. Da -da -ba -da 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 -da. It's just got the essence of a song there, you know, so it's a great little progression and I haven't even, haven't even completed the cycle of the scale. Let's do this in C minor. Could be like 
like this as well. I'll use a few more slash chords now. And even more slash chords now. Right, now we're gonna really have some fun with this progression. We're gonna go up major, and then we're gonna go down minor. I love this progression. I've written a few songs with, of my own with this progression. Um, don't tell anyone, this one's mine. No, it isn't. It, it belongs to us all, by the way. Chords have no copyright. You, you can swipe chords out of songs, put your own melodies to it. Chords are for everyone. So, but yeah, this is one I like. This is a secret weapon, this one, because it's so much emotion in there. And when I, when I compose with this progression, I can really feel the audience feeling that emotion. They're, they're quite moved by it. Um, but yet, I'm, I feel like sometimes I'm not really doing the work. It's the, it's the scale that's doing the work. And I'm, you know, as a composer, taking credit for it. Um, uh, but the, the miracle of the major and minor scale. So we're going to go up major, down minor. You won't believe how good this sounds, right? I'm teaching all my tricks today. It's beautiful, isn't it? Let's do it in another key. What about D major? Okay, the fourth awesome progression for today. Whew. Now this one's a, a more straightforward one, I guess you could say, but it has a twist to it. And that's where it's so elegant and beautiful. You hear this in a lot of the great Elton stuff. Um, it's got a gospel-y feel to it. It's used in a lot of rock as well, uh, a lot of blues. And I'll show you in C major to just show how powerful this is. Why I like composers like Elton so much actually, because a lot of pop music is a lot of one, four, five. My brown eyed girl. Yeah, it's fine, but I get bored of that quite quickly. And this is just a really simple way to get a 1 4 5 song and just spice it up. We add some really cool ingredients to it. So we got the 1 and the 4, C and F. Okay, let's really spice that up. Let's add an E flat. That's a flattened third, right? Compared to the C major scale, 1, 2, 3. Flat. This sounds so great, doesn't it? What's great about it is that 
you get an aspect of minor within the major because we're in a major key, C major, E flat major, F major, C major, it's all C major stuff, but that E flat major comes from a C minor scale. We've borrowed a chord from C minor and we've placed it in C major. So we get a little bit of nostalgia in a happy key. So it's all then tied up together. Yeah, we're just fooling ourselves, but it's C major still. Let's do more of it then. There's more of that where it came from, right? Let's do a flattened sixth of the scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Flatten that from the C minor, A flat. And while we're at it, let's have a flattened seventh. B flat. By the way, flattened six, flattened seven to C. No, it's the Hollywood ending, right? <laughs> it's very dramatic. You hear it in opera as well. But it, it really spices up the C major, doesn't it? So now we've got a flattened third, a flattened six, a flattened seventh. So let's play with them now. Finished yet? Let's do this in A major. I love this in A major because you get chords like A major, C major, that's the flattened third, D major, that's the chord four, F major, that's the chord flattened six, and flattened seven is the G. And then guitarists really like this. This is very guitar friendly, so this is where guitar and piano really can meet together. And again. Now I know some of you are saying, how are you embellishing those chords? It's really quite simple. I'm just getting the scale of the chord. So I get A major. Chord. I just add the second note of the scale and the fourth note of the scale. C major, D major, F major, G major, and so on. So I have those notes available to me as well to add my embellishments. And you know, the hardest thing about it is not the theory, it's the finger independence, the execution. You just keep it simple to start with. That's the thing, the 21st century piano student, all of you who are watching right now fall into that category. They want to get their hands on all sorts of things. They want to play classical, they want to play jazz, they want to play blues, they want to play pop, they want to do it all. They're overwhelmed and they don't know where to start. Well, I think these four chord progressions are a great place to start, but um, a lot of you need more structure than that. And that's why we have the Complete Musician Program. And in the Complete Musician Program, what we do is we, we structure a learning program based on four pillars of learning, 21st century piano student learning. So the big focus is chords, chords, chords. That's the first pillar. That's your low hanging fruit, I guess you could say, a chords, because there's so much you can get from the piano with chords in a relatively short amount of time. So that's the good news. The, the bad news is that there are other elements that take longer to master. You can't do this overnight. Um, 
don't don't listen to anyone that says that you can learn piano in like you know a couple of months or something it's it's, it's you can't it's a lie um, um so i have to tell you the truth um and the other pillars are groove that's the second pillar groove is so important we have a special groove course just dedicated to that to that alone rhythm adding rhythm and life to your playing bringing your chords to life which is also so important. So chords, chords, chords is pillar one. And then groove is pillar two. And you put the two together, then we start to see some exciting feedback loops in your plane. They feed into each other. That's the structure of this course. And then the third pillar, improvisation the ability to embellish and expand upon these ideas. It takes a little bit more time to get used to that, but there's theory and there, are, and there are exercises we can do in our practice every day, which we cover in this course, that will bring you closer to achieving those sorts of goals in your play. This course is designed for upper beginners to intermediate players, but if you're an advanced player, it is an extremely helpful refresher. So what's the last pillar? The last pillar really is the hardest one. It's the integration of all the parts, arrangement and styling it all together to become a complete musician. So if you can learn your chords quite quickly, uh, the last pillar, arrangement and integration, takes a lifetime to learn. I'm still learning it myself. But the Complete Musician program is a lifelong program. You have lifelong access to the resources and the materials. Outside the two month running of the course, you have access to everything. And all you have to do to inquire about this course is visit our website or visit the link here. Just click the link here to look at the syllabus and the enrollment uh, details of the course. My whole life of education, research and development has gone into this program and I'm absolutely excited to share it with you. This course has changed the musical lives of people from all over the world. Uh, we've been running it for a few years now. Anyone who's on this program has access to all the updates of the program. I'm constantly updating it and revising it and improving it. Always, I'm thinking about it all the time. Uh, getting feedback from my students who have found it really valuable and we continue together to improve it, to make it better and better and better. Every day, every year, you get access to all of that, all of the improvements of the course, just with the one payment. I'm proud of all of my students who've invested in the course. I know it takes a lot to do something like that. I thank them for their support because their support has meant that we can not only bring you these wonderful videos week in and week out, but that they can invest in themselves and improve and make incredible changes to their piano playing. And, and it's just incredible. I'm so inspired by what they have achieved. They have achieved more than I ever thought they actually could. They've surprised me and moved me and made me more ambitious for them. The stories I have about my students of all ages who have achieved the most remarkable things with this course. Uh, just talking to one of my students in Canada. She's, she's 84 years old, only been playing piano for a couple of years. She's played Bach and Chopin, improvising on Chopin, composing her own pieces of music. I'm thinking, gosh, I can't wait till I'm 80 now. Maybe I'll be able to write a symphony. Maybe I'll be able to do the things I thought I would never be capable of doing. It's making me a better musician. And that's, that's, the, that's the power of education. So if you want to know more about that, visit our website, Contemporary School of Piano, just to say hi to us. Uh, we have a team, an amazing team, and we love to speak to our friends and musical family all over the world. See you soon.